of many states and countries. We bring together different ways of celebrating our various beliefs. I invite all of you to share to reflect on this occasion in your own fashion. Thank you for participating in today's celebration of our students' accomplishments. We are honored to have with us members of the IUP Council of Trustees, Ms. Susan Delaney, Mr. Aaron Douthat, and Mr. Gailey Bulwer. Please stand and be recognized. Thank you and thanks for all you do to support and advance IUP. I will now introduce members of the President's Cabinet, deans, and faculty members on the platform who will not be speaking at the ceremony today. As I call your name, please stand and remain standing until all are introduced. Dr. Rhonda Lucky, Vice President for Student Affairs. Dr. Cornelius Luton, Vice President for Administration and Finance. Mr. James McGannon, Vice President for Enrollment Management and Communications. Ms. Robin Gorman, Executive Assistant to the President for Government and Community Relations. Ms. Barbara Moore, Director, Institutional Research, Planning and Assessment. Mr. Michael Hood, Dean of the College of Fine Arts. Dr. Deanne Snavely, Dean of the College of Natural Sciences and Mathematics. Dr. Robert Camp, Dean of the Everly College of Business and Information Technology. Dr. Mark Correa, Dean of the College of Health and Human Services. Dr. Yao Asamoah, Dean of the College of Humanities and Social Sciences. Dr. Lara Lukahans, Dean of the College of Education and Educational Technology. Mr. Luis Gonzalez, Dean of Libraries. Dr. David Laporte, Senate Chair, and our Grand Marshal, Robert Miller. Please join me in welcoming the platform party. <laughs> members of the faculty, please stand and be recognized. I ask members of the audience, faculty, faculty, they never do what they're told. I would ask the members of the audience to please join the platform party and graduates in expressing our gratitude for the contributions that the faculty 
has made to ensure the success of today's graduates. Thank you, Pat. Our student speaker, Michael Pack, has been described by one of our faculty members as, quote, a strong school psychologist who relates well to teachers, administrators, parents, and children, and as an emerging leader in his field. A native of Newburgh, New York, he received his master's in educational psychology at IEP and completed the certification program in school psychology here as well. While at IEP, he was a graduate assistant and a very popular teaching assistant, consistently attaining high ratings in his student evaluations. Please welcome Michael Pack. Speaking on behalf of my fellow graduates, we thank you for being here with us today. We're grateful for your support and guidance for us over these past years as we work toward our degrees. Speaking for myself, I know I couldn't stand here today without, without the love and support of my wife, Meredith, my parents, Therese and Michael, my grandparents, and the rest of my family. I'd also like to take a moment to express my gratitude to the commencement committee for granting me the honor of speaking today. I'm very grateful and humbled for this honor. I'd also like to congratulate my fellow graduates. While we come here today from many different fields of study, we all have something in common, and that's this place. So just take a few seconds to mentally put yourself back where you were when you were accepted to IUP. I remember where it was that I mailed my application. It was the post office in the Grove City Outlet. I remember what I wore to my interview because as a college student, I had nothing appropriate to wear, so I had to go out and buy a dress shirt. And I remember exactly what it was like to get the call that I had been accepted. Dr. Victoria Damiani called me at about 11.30 in the morning and woke me up. Uh, but I was thrilled nonetheless. So however you arrived at IUP, whatever you studied here, congratulations on your accomplishment. Today, for just a few minutes, I want to tell you about one of my heroes. This is someone whom I have been fortunate enough to meet several times because we happen to be from the same part of New York State. This person was the American folk musician and activist, Pete Seeger. Pete wrote the songs, Turn, 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 Where Have All the Flowers Gone, If I Had a Hammer, Hundreds of Others. His father and mother were both musicians, and Pete learned 12 st string guitar from Huddy Ledbetter, AKA Ledbetter. He composed with Woody Guthrie. And aside from being a folk musician, Pete was active in the labor, peace, and civil rights movements throughout his long life. In 1955, he was subpoenaed to testify before Senator Joe McCarthy and the House Un-American Activities Committee because he was alleged to have performed for meetings of the Communist Party and other groups that the committee considered un-American. In the face of Joe McCarthy, Pete stood firm. He refused to answer any questions about who he had associated with or performed for. But he also refused to plead the fifth, because that would have implied he was guilty of something. Instead, he answered, and I quote, I decline to discuss under compulsion where I have sung, and who has sung my songs, and who else has sung with me, and the people I have known. I will tell you about my songs, but I am not interested in telling you who listened to them. Pete's actions were costly. He was indicted for and convicted of contempt of Congress, sentenced to a year in jail, and that sentence was later overturned, but he was blacklisted and unable to perform in many venues for years. Another reason Pete is inspiring is his vision for community. Pete liked to say he was more conservative than Barry Goldwater. Barry Goldwater just wanted to turn the clocks back to the time before the income tax, but Pete wanted to go back to a time when we all lived in small villages and took care of each other, and nobody lived or worked alone. He demonstrated this each time he gave a concert. He was a master of a technique called line singing, or lining out, which is a form of call and response where the musician sings each line out as it's to be sung, and then the audience repeats it. In this way, he never performed the song for an audience. He engaged with the audience, and they all sang the song together. Pete didn't have to do this. He was a gifted musician, and he had a great voice. He didn't need the help. 
He did this because every voice matters. Every voice adds something to the composition, no matter how small. And the lined out song, where the whole audience is raising their voices and singing out, is always better than a song where the audience just passively listens. Pete sang about justice and equality, and by lining out, he taught all of us to sing about justice and equality. He said, I've never sung anywhere without giving the people listening to me a chance to join in. I guess it's kind of a religion with me. Participation. That's what's going to save the human race. To me, Pete's life is a reminder that we must always be brave in the face of oppression and injustice. In the face of McCarthyism, Pete chose the bravest form of resistance by resisting McCarthy and delegitimizing him at the same time. All with a smile on his face and the gentle, peaceful spirit for which he was always known. May we always face injustice with such a gentle, peaceful, and defiant bravery. Pete's life is also a reminder that we never work alone or earn anything alone. None of us who will walk across this stage today earned our degrees by ourselves. Just as Pete learned to play from his parents and lead belly, composed with Woody, and lined out his lyrics to join his voice with thousands of others, all of us are only here today, are only able to walk across this stage today because we learned from others and worked with others. All of us got where we are today because of the love and support of family and friends, the guidance and wisdom of our professors, and the motivation and support from our fellow students. And now that we have accomplished what we have accomplished, we are obligated to go out and add our efforts to those of others to make the world a better place. Otherwise, these diplomas aren't worth the paper they're printed on. No matter what our field of study, we must focus on applying ourselves to improving the world around us. No matter how or where we work, how big or how small our work may be, if we participate with others, it all matters. Pete taught us to sing about justice and equality. My fellow graduates, what will you teach the world? Again, thank you for being here with us this morning, and congratulations to the class of 2014. The 2014 Distinguished University Professor